So somebody's got to push back against this whole lockdown of immigration theory that Donald Trump has been pushing. And folks, the two points, and maybe more, that I want to make today, the two main points are that we need immigration as a country over the next 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 years. It's an Important. It's not just important, but it's integral to the success of our country to have immigration. And the other point that I want to make is that regardless of what we do, this whole notion of the great replacement theory, you know, that Donald Trump kind of plays with, um, you know, they're going to replace you. These people are, we've got to do something. They're going to replace you. You know, this whole racist undertone that if we, if we don't lock down immigration, they will replace us. Well, that's going to happen anyway. And it's not a problem for me. I encourage it as an American. I think that's what we're all about. But folks, I've got to show you this. So several things that I want to show you here first are that um, two of our biggest competitors, and I mean Russia and China, are facing demographic time bombs. So take a look at this. This article is coming from us uh, to us from the Pew Research Center, and it says it's entitled Key, Key Facts About China's Declining Population. And... Some of the points that they make here are incredibly relevant. And I, I guess the the ultimate conclusion that I think you can draw from this is that China faces an extremely difficult situation over the next 20, 30, 40, 50 years of declining population. And that that challenges their supposed bedrock as one of the superpowers. So I'm looking at a graphic now for those of you that can't see that says China's population is likely to fall below a billion people before 2100. And it shows right now they have 1.42 billion. By 2100, the medium variant on the expectation for their population is going to be about 767 million. The low expectation is 488 million. I mean, that's incredible. That is a demographic time bomb, folks. And there's a lot of reasons for it. They go into this article. But one of the things that they're going to have to deal with, in addition to that decline in population, is an increase in people that are aged, over 65, because it's going to put incredible pressure on their economy to support this growing aging population. So not only do they have this decline, but they have this increase of the amount of people that are aging that are going to need care. So incredible headwinds that they're facing. Not only that, folks, but immigration is important. It shows here in this article, point eight is that more people migrate out of China per year than into it. So that's an incredible sort of bad omen for the country. And it, and it sort of shows you how scary it is if we have no immigration, we could be sitting in the same boat as China. I mean, this, this is unfolding right in front of us. We have to look at what's happening uh, to China as sort of a warning for what could happen to us if we don't have an immigration policy of, you know, that's strong, you know, and, and leads to the vitality of our country. Let's take a look at Russia. So right now there's about 144 million people by 2100 expected that they're going to have 112 million in incredibly dire straits that these these countries are in and some people argue that it's going to force them to do things like they've never done before and i would have to agree with that they're they're cornered by their own population and the the pressures of that so yes they're going to get more crazy you know with the power that they do have um with respect to taking over countries, I think Taiwan and these kind of things. Uh, we've got to be vig vigilant, obviously, about that. But to get back on track here, having a population that's increasing, folks, is so incredibly important for the United States because it, it allows the economy to grow, right? The more people that you have, the more people are buying and selling goods that are being produced, and they're paying taxes. So let's take a look at this article. It's from taxpolicycenter.org. And it indicates that 54% of the federal revenue that comes into the United States, 54% is coming from individual income tax. Only 9% is coming from corporate income tax. 30% is coming from social insurance payroll tax. So when you have an economy where you have more people, you have not only 
more business from having more people, but you're also getting incredible federal revenue. And so I think you can see that it's incredibly important to have a population that's growing. And now I want to show you that if we do nothing in the United States, that scenario of having a population that's growing, which is vital to our importance, wouldn't happen. If we, if we didn't have a growing population, folks, the, the situation would be as dire as what China's facing. So brookings.edu has got this article. It's called New Census Projections Show Immigration is essential to the growth and vitality of a more diverse U.S. population. And several points that the article makes, it says the Census Bureau's new nationwide population projections allow for an assessment of immigration's role for the future of the U.S. population, more so than the previous released 2017-based projections. The new data shows generally lower future population growth due to updated assumptions of fertility, mortality, and immigration from abroad. And they make even more apparent the strong role immigration will play in contributing to the future growth or decline of the U.S. population. As the discussion below reveals, which I'll get into, it says, in a future of decreasing births and increasing deaths across an already aging population, immigration levels are crucial in leading to national growth as opposed to decline in countering what would otherwise be extreme aging like China is facing. Yet counter to widespread claims, immigration is not primarily responsible for making the nation more racially and ethnically diverse as the U.S. population will become less white, even under scenarios of low or zero future immigration. So take a look at this graphic here, folks. So what it's showing us is projected annual U.S. population size between 2022 and 2100. We've got four scenarios. Zero immigration, which is what Donald Trump wants, lockdown. We've got low immigration, main immigration, and we've got high immigration. So if we look at where we are today, we're at 333 million in terms of a population. If we have zero immigration, which again is what Donald Trump would like, our population would go from 333 million to 226 million. If we have high immigration, our population would grow from 333 million to 435 million. And it's important, folks. I mean, it's incredibly important for the long-term vitality and success of this country. We have to have immigration. The article goes on to say the nation will become more diverse regardless of immigration levels. So take a look at this graphic. And again, it shows high immigration main immigration, low immigration, and zero. Again, what Donald Trump wants. And under those four scenarios, if we have zero immigration, there'll be less white people. (laughs) If you can imagine that, zero immigration, we're going to have less white people, which is what Donald Trump is going to end up with. It's ironic that he's portraying and, and sort of, you know, feeding the notion of the great white replacement theory and not so many words, but, you know, in the undertones, basically he's saying that they'll replace you. His policy would do exactly that. His policy long-term would replace white people. And again, I don't care. I think that having a diverse population is what we're all about, folks. But the other question that we have to look at is that question of how would Trump crack down on immigration in a second term? And to answer that question, I'm looking at an article from Reuters. This is May 13th of this year. Just came out. And of course, border enforcement. Nobody's coming in. We're going to build the wall. It's nobody's coming into the United States. That's ultimately what he wants. In addition to that, we would see mass deportations. Trump has pledged to launch the largest deportation effort in U.S. history, focusing on criminals, but aiming to send millions back to their home countries. It's all under the disguise of these are criminals. These people are bringing in drugs. We need to send millions of people back because that's all they do. Well, that's not all they do. They're coming here looking for a better life. Yes, there's some bad people in there, but the vast majority are looking for a better life, folks. And he would send millions and millions of people back. I mean, he is doing exactly what we should not be doing for the long-term success of this country under his policy. An additional 
we would have travel bans, of course, and we'd have family separation. The architect of that was Stephen Miller. And in a town hall last year with CNN, Trump declined to rule out, resuming the contentious zero-tolerance policy that led to thousands of migrant children and parents being separated at the border. And that was a, a hideous policy, and it was brought to us by Stephen Miller, the architect of disaster, immigration disaster. I mean, it. this man would would kill the country with his zero immigration policy, being driven by Stephen Miller and kind of promoted by Donald Trump and supported by Donald Trump. And folks, I have to add, can we su- support a man and can we allow a man to be in office that would do this, that would cripple the long-term vitality of this country? And additionally, Stephen Miller said this, folks. Have a listen to this. The most stylish president and first lady in our lifetimes are Donald Trump and Melania Trump. What? Donald Trump's a style icon. He changed American fashion in The Apprentice. People spent the next 10 years trying to dress like Donald Trump. So if anybody deserves a puff piece on their sense of style, it's Donald Trump. So yes, folks, it is a cult. Actually, it, it is a cult. And just last week, there was a responsible plan that came through uh, in the House, a border plan that came through, and it got voted down. So Donald Trump is is pushing aside anything that makes sense, any sort of uh, plan that's come, that they come up with right now that allows for uh, reasonable immigration. Donald Trump doesn't want to have anything to do with it. He wants a total lockdown on immigration, folks. And as you can see, that policy is absolutely antithetical to the success of our country over the long haul. We can't exist as a country with a policy like that.